My name is Bryce Kala, and I'm a dreamer. Both waking and sleeping, my rich and vivid imagination has been keeping life interesting since I was very little. So I'm going to share those dreams with you, and I'd love for you to share your dreams with me. Let's do this together in a little place that I like to call Somewhere in Dream World. Welcome to the Midnight Notion Somewhere in Dream World podcast. My name is Bryce Kala, and I will be your host for this podcast. This inaugural episode is brought to you by, or rather could have been brought to you by, grapes. Grapes are really good fruit. You can eat them and they taste great. Or they taste grape because they're grapes. They're fruit and you eat them. So if you're a vineyard, a vineyard? or you're a grape reseller, or a grape maker person, then feel free to pay f- pay me for this advertisement. Yes, grapes. They're a thing that I just had and was thinking about. So, <laughs> welcome to the Midnight Ocean uh, Somewhere in Dream World podcast. Uh, this, is, this is the first episode. Thank you so much for listening to the first episode. Uh, this is going to be one hell of a, a, a project that I'm really looking forward to. I love dreams. I love talking about dreams, and that's what this is all going to be about. It's mostly focused on dreams, I should say, because the Midnight Notion part of this is a band, and we'll get to that later on in this episode. Uh, but I want you. I want to. I want to do a little housekeeping and tell everyone listening what this is supposed to be to me and we'll find out in several episodes from now whether it stays that way or whether it transforms but for now the somewhere in dream world podcast is meant to be a podcast all about dreams that's sleeping dreams and waking dreams and you're like bryce what's waking dreams is that daydreaming yeah i I suppose a daydream could probably be a waking dream but i want to spend a lot of time on the visions that we have in our sleep the weird, crazy antics that we see while we're dreaming. I also want to spend some time on the things that we hope for in the future, the things we're really, uh, what's the word I'm uh, just, just, just dreaming of, hoping for, uh, Disney character monologuing about. That's what I hope to get. And in, if, if I can do anything, right, this isn't meant to be an analysis. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a trained psychologist that's going to help you in your life from a doctor perspective well I'm out of words this is probably not the best way to start a podcast by muttering my way through words but I'm not here to help you from a psychology standpoint I'm just here to talk about dreams to share mine to share yours and to just generate discussion about it. But then if we insert a little bit of waking dreams in this, if you've got a waking dream that you'd love to share with the world, hey, maybe if somebody listening has a connection that can help you bring that to life, I'd be happy to facilitate that. So on that note, you can submit your dreams to this podcast by going to midnightnotion.com. Click on the podcast link and there's a dream submission form. You write up your dream and I'll read it here on the website or on the podcast. You submit it on the website. I read it on the podcast and I'll talk about it for a little bit. Hey, that's pretty great. We'll share your dreams with the world. Uh, You'll be able to submit both sleeping and waking dreams. And hey, if you feel like doing it with your voice rather than writing, I've got news for you. I now have a an official Midnight Notion, Somewhere in Dream World podcast, listener line, phone number. That's right, you heard it here, folks. Thanks to the lovely people over at Google, I have a phone number, and I'm going to share that number with you. That number is 612-643-0944. 
That is 612-643-0944. You call that line, you'll hear my voice talking for a little bit, and then you'll be able to share your dream. My only request is that you keep it relatively short and keep it clean, because this show, I want to be able to reach all audiences. I don't mind if you choose to swear in your life. I try not to swear too much in my life. I like to keep things PG, but also I think dreams are amazing and cool, and there's a lot of things you can learn from them. And if we prevent the seven-year-olds who are getting into podcasts, which I'm not sure if that's a thing, but if there's a young person that wants to get into podcasts, then let them get into podcasts. If I have to put an explicit sticker on this podcast, I'm going to be really bummed out. So let's try to prevent that. Let's make this open to all ages, all kinds of people. Then uh, then we can keep the dreams, al- the dreams alive, yeah? Cool? Is that cool with you? It better be cool with you, because that's how I'm going to run this show. So I, so I was looking at Apple Podcasts, and I was actually kind of surprised how few podcasts there are relating to dreams. And I'm talking about sleeping dreams with this one. I was looking and I searched for dreams and everything that was coming up was talking about following your dreams and how to make your dreams alive and dreaming of bettering your person and whatever. All those motivational sort of stuff. Uh, That's what they were all about. And there was maybe one or two that came up that were discussions on dreams, much like this podcast will be or is hoping to be. And, and, and that surprised me because every time I talk about dreams just out in public, out with friends or whatever, if I bring it up, I almost always hear, I love dreams. Oh, I love talking about dreams. Oh, I had this really crazy one last night. Yeah, occasionally you get the, I don't dream and I don't, I don't remember any of mine. And that's okay because maybe we can get fix that and we'll get into that later. But I just find it interesting how many people are interested in dreams and want to talk about dreams and that nobody's doing podcasts on them. So that's another reason for this. I want to do a podcast on dreams. Uh, there is a, an influence of mine who kind of inspired this idea retroactively. I used to listen to a radio show back in the day called The Dream Doctor. This was run by, hosted by Dr. Charles McPhee, and he spent his life studying dreams. And I got really amped up because people would call into the show, they would tell him their dreams, and he would analyze them from a professional standpoint. And He changed a lot of, I feel like he changed a lot of lives, but just listening to it and listening to other people talk about their dreams was so just, it just kind of opens your mind and you you realize, I can't believe that I'm thinking of the same things in my sleep as other people are thinking, or that I'm envisioning these same moments or sequences of events or just recurring symbols just hearing other people talk about theirs and seeing how you can apply those things to your life was really inspiring to me. Uh, Charles was a really great guy. He was very passionate about the topic. He went to school and he got interested in psychology and he found that every psychology class there is would spend a very, very little bit of time on dreams. It was kind of one of those, and now our dreams unit. People have dreams, and now the brain, you know, they just kind of skip over that section because how can you teach anybody about it when it's this mysterious thing that's different for every single person and there's no way for us to actually see it happening, right? I see my dreams, and when I wake up, I can tell you about them, and you see your dreams, and you can wake up and tell someone else about them, but we can't watch each other's dreams, at least not yet. I saw There's a really cool YouTube video, and you know what? I'm going to put that in the notes section of this podcast. There's a cool YouTube video from uh, that, that's talking about the potential of smart MRI machines that can put together pictures of what the dreamer is dreaming it's it's insane i definitely think that you should go check that out um it's it's really fascinating but 
we can't observe each other's dreams. So all we can do is just talk about them. And I think that's what's what's the most interesting part about them. And one of the main reasons why I want to do this podcast. Um, so so Charles McPhee, great guy, passion and vigor. Every time every time he opened his mouth, you could hear him smiling. And and that's something that alone, whether regardless of the topic, that already has me interested. I love passionate people. But uh, the saddest part of this story is that when uh, 2006 rolled around, people started complaining that they thought that he was drunk on the air and that he was kind of slurring his words and getting a little sloppy. And there was a lot of concern and it turned out it wasn't uh, he wasn't he wasn't a drinker or not a heavy one that I know of. But uh, he was diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease, which is also known as ALS, and it's very debilitating, and it's it's a sad thing. And he en- ended up having to to end the show and uh, broke a lot of hearts because we really looked up to him. Our uh, the listeners really enjoyed him, and and he struggled with that for many years, and he passed away in 2011. So. I guess this first episode I'd like to dedicate to the memory of Charles McPhee. You can check out some of his work is still alive and and well on at dreamdoctor.com. So go to dreamdoctor.com. You can find some a dream dictionary there as well as a few resources. You can hear him back in his heyday speaking about dreams and there's a lot of really cool resources there. So definitely check that out. So. And if you know anybody that's been affected by ALS, it's a terrible thing. And my heart goes out to you. So if you're if you happen to be dealing with that right now, please best everything to you. My all may all of your dreams come true and that you uh, you have a pleasant um, rest of your life. This is really getting dark. Should we turn this around? We should turn this around. Let's talk about dreams. huh? I think it's time to go to sleep. So continuing my story about Charles McPhee, I called into his show and actually got on the air. So the first dream that I'm going to share with you is the dream that I shared with him that his analysis turned around, just completely changed the way that I'd look at dreams, even though I had been listening to the show and enjoying it. His analysis just blew my mind. So I'm going to share the dream with you. I'm going to try to make it a little more story-like and a little... I will proceed this by saying this dream was a nightmare that I had when I was about seven years old. So let's get into it, my first dream. It was nighttime. I was there in my grandparents' house. It was their beach house. And of course, my grandparents didn't actually have a beach house, but I knew that in this dream, it was their beach house. It was a normal house, just on the beach. Something called me to look out to the ocean. Something, I don't know if I needed to just let the problems of the world away with the wind, or just to just to meditate for a bit, but something called me to the shore. So I opened the back door, I walked down the steps, the wooden steps, from their deck. I walked through the sand and I approached the incoming waves and I sat down. I looked out at the dark. It wasn't really clear where the water ended and the sky began because there was no moon, no stars that I could recall either. The sound of the waves ever present. Calm, not Not too rough. But then I saw something strange in the water that isn't normally in water. Two figures emerging side by side, triangular in shape. Ears, pointy ears. And just after, the eyes, the yellow, menacing eyes, staring into my soul. The snout was longer than a normal snout of this creature, and the teeth longer than normal, sharp canines. It was a wolf, 
and it had its eyes set on me. It didn't move fast. As a matter of fact, barely moved at all. But it was coming for me, and my body, I couldn't move. I knew I was in danger. I knew I was close to safety, but I could not, could not move. I was screaming internally, trying to move my body, but that wolf, it had me on lockdown, and I was frozen. Inch by inch, it grew closer. Emerging more and more from the water, I could see it clear as day. And then I woke up. I was around seven at the time, and I was panting. I was a little, a little terrified, but somehow, even at seven, I was able to convince myself it was just a dream. So I laid down, I closed my eyes, and bam, right back in. The wolf was there, staring at me, right where he left off. I woke up once more, and I couldn't sleep the rest of the night. It was terrifying. So that's the dream. I shared it with Charles McPhee, and I kid you not, his first words just rocked my world. The first question he asked me, and now I can't recite it verbatim, I don't remember exactly what he said, but the first question he asked was, is there, or was there at the time of this dream, a man in your life sort of taking over that was sort of threatening someone who imposed a level of deceitfulness on you. This is the first episode of this podcast, so most of you might not know this about me, but I was born to a single mother who, around the age of seven, got married to my brother's dad, who was never, in my eyes, a good person. They later divorced, and, and that's that. But at the time of this dream, we were living with him in his house, and I just did not like him from day one. And there was something about him that just did not feel genuine to me, and he had a very negative impact on my life uh, very, very few fond memories of him and very, very many uh, bad memories of him. And the fact that the first question that the dream doctor asked me was if there was a man in my life who was deceitful or, or uh, caused negative emotions, I my jaw hit the floor because I didn't tell the dream doctor about my life. I started with the dream and then he asked me about something that had such a huge impact on my life. Blew me away. Uh, I obviously said yes. And, and he explained later on uh, what, that the wolf in the dream is that symbol. Uh, from the Dream Doctor website, I, I see that he, he writes that the, the wolf symbolizes fears of becoming hurt or injured or of being consumed in our waking life. They can re represent a threatening male figure or a threatening condition like cancer. And of course, in the mindset of seven-year-old Bryce, there was a threatening figure and uh, just wow, just wow. So then he went on to explain the other symbols. He explained that water is a symbol often of emotion, as, as of his research anyway. I'm not saying that any of these symbols are cold hard facts. I'm sure everybody has their own analysis of what dreams mean, but water is typically in Dr. Charles McPhee's mind a symbol of emotion and you have to kind of gauge what the water is doing and what how it's affecting the other things in the dream. And this being a very very heavy weighted subject to me, I had an entire ocean before me that this wolf was coming out. So very weighted topic, a very important topic. The grandparents' house, uh, at the time of the dream, and actually not until I was probably 25-ish, I had never seen the ocean, and I had never been near the ocean, uh, but my, my maternal grandpa and grandparents, uh, my, my maternal grandpa and grandma, they, um, they lived very close, and I spent a lot of time. Actually, when I was born, 
lived with them for the first five years of my life. So they were a very important part of my life. And that definitely means um, that that's kind of a point of safety. When you have this dangerous dream, you're out there by the ocean and this wolf is coming at you. The point of safety, uh, the safe house is, uh, is my grandparents' house. So that definitely very much so is a place that I felt safe. The, the can't move is actually really interesting to me too. Uh, he, he talked a lot about in his dream analysis is analyses that, that that's actually part of the, what happens to our body when we're sleeping. Uh, I know a lot of you have probably had a dream where you tried to move and you can't, you tried to scream, but you can't. A lot of that has to do with what your body is doing at night in the REM state of sleep where most dreaming occurs. And of course, we've learned that there's dreaming in other parts of sleep. But apparently in the REM state, your body is just shut down. It doesn't, it's almost everything is off except for a couple of things. You know, maybe your blood is still circulating. Your prefrontal cortex is still uh, active and that's, or no, actually I'm wrong. That is completely off. The prefrontal cortex is the area of the brain that controls logic, which explains why we don't have any, uh, these dreams don't often make any sense. That's off completely, but most of your body is off. The part of your brain that is active, that's putting all of these, these images in your head, uh, that is telling your body, hey, run. And your legs are like, sorry, man, I'm asleep. And your brain's like, please and your legs are like no and so your brain is communicating to your your dreaming mind that hey sorry body can't move and so it's this really surreal experience because it's like your waking life is part of your dreaming life and your dreaming life is part of it's it's interesting i'm not going to explain the psychology like i said before I'm not an, an experienced psychologist. I'm not a psychologist at all. I'm just a guy that likes dreams. But I found that really interesting. So if you find yourself in that situation where you can't move, uh, hopefully um, hopefully it, it's not a, a dream that really affects your waking life, uh, that you can get over the nightmare when you wake up. But that might explain why you've experienced that phenomenon. So there you go. My first dream, the wolf dream. Uh, it had a huge impact on my life and Dr. Charles McPhee's analysis of it got me really obsessed with dreams. So, um, so that's that. I think it's time to wake up. So on the note of waking dreams, I have to begin this first episode or the first episode waking dreams segment of the first episode with a little chat about my biggest dream and that is midnight notion itself now this is the midnight notion podcast hopefully you're hearing about this after hearing about the music but if you're listening to this podcast for the dreams welcome thank you for doing so my name is Bryce Kala, and I'm a musician. <laughs> I'm an artist of all kinds. I do a lot of things. I was the drawer all all throughout um, the schooling years, and then I got really invested in music around the age of 14 or 15. I had been taking band, and then I learned how to play drums. I actually taught myself how to play drums, bought my first drum kit back in 2001, and a couple months later got a guitar. And so... Music has been a part of my life since then, and actually before then too, but maybe that'll come up in later episodes. The point is that I knew that I wanted to make music and that I wanted to perform it I wanted to perform it on stage. And that's something that I have done many times. I've been in several different bands, and actually as a solo performer, as Midnight Notion, I've done a few solo gigs that way too, but it's not easy doing it alone. Uh, if I was an acoustic musician, then I'd be playing all kinds of gigs. If I was into something that required a lot of loops, like electronic music or pop, I could take that on the road and just do it myself. But unfortunately, the genre of choice was rock and roll. And the way that I write my music is, well, there's not really a lot of opportunity for loops. Uh, actually... Fun fact, the intro song that you heard and all of the in-between, all of the music on this podcast, it's all me. And the song for the intro of this podcast, it's called Somewhere in Dreamworld. Who would have thought that that song would eventually become the name of a podcast? So that's pretty neat. I think it's pretty neat. 
I love it. So uh, anyway, I've been writing music since I was 15, and today is my 31st birthday. Oh, thank you. Happy birthday to me. Uh, yes, it's my birthday. I'm 31 now. So for over half of my life, I've been focused on music. It's been something that I was, I, th- I mentioned that I drew all the way through school. When I was a kid, I would draw a lot. I was the doodler in class. Somewhere around high school or middle school, when I started picking up music, those doodles became tabs and lyrics. And all of a sudden, notation took over my notebooks. And now I still doodle from time to time, but music, there's something about it. It's the international language. It doesn't matter what language you speak or where you're from. You can feel notes, their frequencies, and the way they resonate in our bodies, in our ears, in our minds, in our memories, in our dreams maybe even. The way it affects us is so amazing to me. I, I, I love, now I'm getting really pumped up and excited and smiley. I love music. I love all music. I love I love everything from uh, from Metallica, who's my favorite band, all the way back to Gregorian chant. I love symphonic uh, movements. I love Dean Martin and Frank Sinatra. I love Matchbox Twenty and Sum Forty One and Backstreet Boys and just it, my my preferences go all across the board. And I want to make music that makes me feel good. And I hope that the music that I make makes people feel good as well. I'm not making it to sell a lot of things. Naturally, I believe that if I want to get to the point of stadium worldwide tours, I have to make money somewhere. But the money isn't the focus. The focus is sharing my dream with the world and being able to share the things that I've created with people and hopefully create with them And just have a good time, because really, that's all that matters. The world keeps turning after we die, so all we can do is just enjoy what we got while we're here. And what I have is a lot of ideas, a lot of musical ideas. I have over a 100 songs that I've written. I have several albums planned out. As a matter of fact, I have troubles deciding what to record, because I have so many backlogged finished songs just waiting to be recorded and because I'm doing it all myself it's very difficult if I had a band if I had three other guys a drummer or girls too I I don't I don't mind who who it is really if I had a drummer a guitarist who can solo and a bassist I could do so much I could do so much with this project because I'm ready to record tomorrow The thing is, recording is expensive. I can do it in my home. It's going to be lo-fi, but I I would like the songs to get the treatment they deserve. I feel like they deserve high-quality recordings. So I want to go into a studio. So I want to bring three other people with me because I don't know if you know this, but paying for stuff is a lot easier when four people do it than it is when one person does it. I have one record out right now, an EP called March to Midnight, and I spent $1,800 on it to, to, to have it mixed and mastered and replicated. There are 300 copies, and I have probably about 140 copies left. I'd like to play some shows so I could sell those. I would love to say that all 300 copies went, uh, so, so that's another part of it, but I just want to be able to perform. My heart has always been on the stage. So that's my dream. I hope that somewhere out there, there's someone listening that goes, hey, you know what? I know a guitarist in Minnesota. I know a bassist in Minnesota. I know a drummer in Minnesota. Maybe you can hook me up. Ah, and with that, my music plays. That means it's over. This is the first episode. It's all done. I can't believe it. We made through an entire half hour. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. Uh, Again, this podcast was brought to you by Grapes, or could have been brought to you by Grapes, if someone wanted to pay that money. Uh, Please submit a dream at MidnightNotion.com, or call in at 612-643-0944. If you just have a general comment on the podcast, then go to uh, send an email to podcast at MidnightNotion.com. Otherwise, we'll see you on the next episode. My name is Bryce Kala, and until next time, sleep well, 
dream well and be well. 